good evening, everyone. So uh, it's really good to be at my first on-site conference after this pandemic parenthesis. So it's really nice to see everyone in person here. And I'm super happy to be talking to folks about some exciting new things that we have been working on during this time. So I want to talk about a new product that we that we have built, and it is a new front-end framework specifically for uh, Java backends. It is called Gila. So this is Man Manolo Carrasco. I live in the province of Madrid here in Spain and work for Badin. Badin is an open source company in Finland. <coughs> and you might kn uh, know that uh, we deliver Flow, one of the most used Java web frameworks. And uh, my position in the, in the company is as the release lead. And uh, I'm taking care that all modules are delivered on time with the appropriate quality and standards. And uh, they are integrated smoothly. And customers are happy when upgrading their applications. And yes, I have been involved in open source for a long time, doing things with Jenkins, GWT, Apache James, Polymer, and obviously Badin. So let me do a quick quiz to the audience. So uh, here, who is a Java developer? I guess all the room, well, mostly, right? And who is a TypeScript developer? JavaScript developer? So mostly the same amount of people. Uh, but do you consider yourself a backend developer? Frontend developer? Oh, less. Yeah. Full stack developer. Good. <laughs> and what front end frameworks, front end? are you using today? Angular? Vue? React? Badin? Java? One, two, okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, uh, the tendency right now is that in, in companies they want to have backend and frontend developers uh, programming in different languages. So that's one of the reasons of having this. So imagine this situation as real, okay? For this example, your company are building an application, a Spring Boot, backend, and a TypeScript frontend. So you build everything uh, that is shown in, the, in this slide, and it works well, okay? So as you can see here, we have a Java block with an entity, very uh, simple entity, and uh, it is persisted in the database and exposed throw a REST service in the Spring. And in the client side, we have something that could be written that is JavaScript or TypeScript. It doesn't matter. And in this case, we are using lit. We are going to, take to, to talk up, uh, a lot today about lit, which is a lit uh, weight library for web components. So a few weeks later, Bob comes along and it's Friday afternoon and he needs to get some stuff done quickly so he can go out with his fri friends. So he feels like he, it's, an, it's not necessary word to have to deal with first and last name separately like we have in this slide, first name, last name. So <clears throat> he decides to simplify the model a little bit and he uh, changed, in order to help his code, he changed the model. And uh, basically, he decided uh, to remove last name and put everything in a name field. So nobody else was at the office, so he decided to just push to production. It happens many times, right? And leave the office. So he had a good time with with his friends late during the night. He's drinking, dancing, having fun. But uh, when he wakes up the next afternoon, he has eight or nine calls and messages from his boss. And in addition to that, he has a huge head age, right? Well, uh, 
So when working with Java, we almost assume a lot of security when refactoring because of the compile time checking. Uh, but when we build REST API, that safe net doesn't exist. So wouldn't it have been great if Bob had gotten a compilation error telling him that the view also needs to be updated? So it, it doesn't happen normally, all right? So that's the basic premise for Gila. So what if we made a front-end framework specifically for Spring Boot backends? And since we know that you are using type safe languages in both in server and, and, and client because you are using TypeScript, we can optimize and simplify the developer experience. So Gila uses normal Spring Boot backend. It uses a TypeScript frontend built in lead and uh, a little bit of magic to take the developer experience to the next level. So Gila brings the security of compilers to the client side, but also links the data model and communication model between backend and frontend, secure and also say type safe. So by the way, uh, Gila, uh, do you know what Gila means? Yes, yes, okay. <laughs> so Gila, Gila is a Cloudberry, it's a, a Cloudberry in, in Finland. So it's a Finnish word for a Cloudberry, which is very rare and also very appreciated in Nordic ca countries. So uh, the reason for selecting this name is because of keeping a Finnish word like it was with Badin that has not so much entries in, the, in Google. So we can give a better documentation to our users. So you look for Gila and probably the only thing is the framework, okay? And uh, yeah, if you are not familiar, I think most of you are familiar with Spring Boot, but uh, Spring Boot is also an opinionated framework in the sense that it's an opinionated way for using a Spring platform. But still, it gives us uh, things like an embedded web server and we don't need to configure a web server ourselves. Uh, when we, uh, we are deploying, it comes with a lot of starter dependencies and that automatically configure everything like security, JPE, authentication, etc. So that's uh, the main reason for using backend, uh, uh, Spring Boot in the backend. And lead is the component model that we use. And it's similar to React. Actually, lead is based on Polymer, but it's very lightweight. So uh, it's similar to React, but smaller and faster because it's using web standards at, at the base. So instead of emulating a virtual DOM in JavaScript, for instance, it, uh, it is deferring a lot of uh, that work to the actual browser engine through some uh, new web standards. So that means that in just less than five kilobytes of JavaScript, you get a very powerful, a small utility that allows you to essentially define your own HTML elements, and uh, which is really powerful. And also, if you are in a large organization, you can reuse those components with other frameworks or other languages. And then that's really where Gila comes. So it combines front-end framework with a Java backend and makes sure that these two things communicate smoothly together. So we give you the front-end component API and routing and forms and virtualization and build and debugging tooling and testing and obviously a large set of UI components. So and the reason why we have chosen to build this integrated stack for developing web application for Java is that if we focus on the productivity, so if you are using a small lightweight library like only lead or React, you will need to piece together with uh, your own framework and, and add a lot of other third party libraries for routing, exposing services, etc. And it takes you a little while to build your own framework at the end. But then say half a year later, most of these third party libraries start diverging and you, and you need to update them and you need to run situations where starting to spend a lot of time fixing small things that break 
in this integration. Right? So when you are using, in the other side, a front-end framework, uh, obviously you get a little more from, from the vendor because the vendor, uh, you have less or fewer choices and, and to make up and you get started a bit quicker, right? And uh, the vendor uh, help keeping those parts compatible. You don't lose uh, much uh, time for doing that. So full stack frameworks take that one step further. So where essentially most of the, the choices that you need to make get started have been made for you. It's a very opinionated way of building application, but if you're okay with those opinions, it means that you can get started building application really uh, fast. So basically that is Gila. So Gila is a full stack uh, front end that probably saves half of your time developing because you focus on the, on the business of your company. So Gila is this designed for building rich and uh, interactive application, but not regular websites. So it's, uh, it's for large enterprise app uh, business application that needs to be usable in any device and accessible by disabled people. So it's guaranteed that all the components are accessible for blind uh, people, color, color blind, deaf, and etc. And uh, it includes a very large UI uh, library from simple buttons, text fields, complex components like data grids, spreadsheets, maps, graphs, etc. So, all right, so instead of having slides for all of this, what I want to do is to jump into some code and show it live. I'm going to do something here like close this and mirror arrangement mirror displays I hope you can read the code oops and uh, yes okay so when you want to start with Gila you have two options so basically you can go to the to the Gila site and, uh, uh, and install some NPN utility and create an, a project. But the easiest way is to go to this site, which is startbuddy.com, and remove everything from here, all the views. So you can add more views here. You have a lot of examples. Remove everything, and normally I add this master detail using Gila and everything is set so it's this kind of quad view then in the settings i select well i can put here my application name which is uh, gila tutorial then it's dot manolo for instance i don't want a side menu or top menu i don't want any menu because it's just one uh, uh, one view in my UI and then I take vadin 23.1 which is pre release candidate one today I select Java uh, 17 I prefer pnpm instead of npm because it's faster for the database I select h2 I don't want docker right now kubernetes but I want feed and then finally I download it and I get a zip file right so um let's go to the, the, the this is the the same zip file but i already extracted it so if i open here visual code and also i can start running the application it takes just a while to start because it is preparing the front end it is uh, downloading npm de uh, dependencies and at the end it is it opens the the browser and when the application is ready yeah this is the view that we had in the in the in the initializer right 
and then go to the code. Okay, so in a Hila project, we have two main folders. One is for the Java stuff. This is the normal Maven uh, structure. And then we have the, the front end stuff in this folder, right? I'm going to to clean everything and start for from scratch. So basically, I have the tutorial view here, and I don't want this view, which is is something that extends lit element. Also, at mobx, if you want uh, uh, reactive states between the application and so on. So let's remove this for not complicating things right now, and then go to the tutorial view which actually is something complex at this point. Remove everything, extend instead of view from lit element. And then uh, remove all the imports. So if I save this, probably in my UI, I have a blank page because my class is empty, right? It's, it's, and then let me explain what is in the in the source folder with the Java. So we have an application Java class, which is a normal Spring Boot initializer with a main method. So nothing uh, new for you probably, except that we have this marker uh, uh, interface. So as Gila is able to read what theme you need to for your application, and also if you want a PWE application, so it configures the service workers and everything. Uh, we don't want that, but then we have in the service folder, we have a normal JP repository. It's just something extending the JP repository and, and putting here the the type and I don't want this service so I am going to remove this class because we are going to do later and um, we have a generator let's continue with this generator so as we have 10 uh, well, 100 sample sample persons and in the in the database when it starts and then we have um, endpoints i want to remove the endpoints as well because we are working with endpoints today and in the entity folder we have just a bin with a with a, a sample person which is an entity that can be persisted by jp in the database this abstract entity is just uh, the class that all the entities in this uh, starter extend so you have an id and nothing else, so not nothing interesting. So we can close everything but the view in the in the client side. So let's start learning um, lit. So if you go to the lit documentation, the first thing to learn is that for rendering something in your UI, you need to to put a render method. So that's everything that you need. So yeah, copy and paste this render and we have here a, a method let's import it so the id helps for that so html is a parser a template parser so it reads html and generates whatever it needs for the virtual dom in the in the browser right and also it keeps uh, the states synchronized and everything that it needs so for our application i want to to put these backticks and uh, let's remove this and use simple div here oops okay and then something like hello well it should work so yeah we have hello in our interface oh good and the next thing to to learn is that for styling my web component or my view I need to have uh, a static uh, property, which is similar to the render. I don't know why it is static. Well, I, I know why they did that static, but it's not important at this point. And um, it uses instead of HTML, a parser for uh, a string that contains CSS. 
it also is imported from the lead library, right? So I want to put something like uh, host, which means I, I want to target this web component. So the host special keyword is for the uh, tutorial view component itself. And I want to put some padding. Okay, so when I save this, my UI should be more beautiful because it has some padding, right? And then the next thing to, to learn is reactive properties, okay? So in lit element, you only need to, to, to learn about this annotation, which is property or the other annotation, which is a state. So property means that uh, uh, a variable that is annotated, well, at, uh, actually it's not annotated because in, in TypeScript is decorated, right? And it means that this variable in everywhere that it is used, when the variable is, uh, is modified in, in everywhere, it's going to be modified. It's, uh, its value. So let's put here this name as well. Let's make the ID to import the property decorator. And here, let's initialize that with world. Okay, so we, we, have, we, we, we have learned how to create reactive properties. And then let's use that property in our UI. So if we go to the expressions, there are only four things to learn. So when you want to use a property, you need to know that you need to use the dollar symbol and then the curly bracket. So dollar, and here the ID, if you put this, probably you have the name here, yes. You have the name, so basically you, you have hello world, and so, because this property, let's put it a public property, is public. We can inspect this in the JavaScript console. So this is the tutorial view. You, you see that it's a new tag that the browser knows what to do with it. And dollar zero here should be tutorial view, and dollar zero name is world. So just changing it for something like the Spring. Yeah, it updates here, right? Yeah, it's fantastic. And uh, okay, so let's do something more interesting, like adding an input in my in my ID. So I want to write here, and everything should be reflected here. So for that part, we need to to know another thing here in the expressions, and is the add character. So the, when you have a tag and you put the add character means that it is an event listener. So let's put something like uh, add and then we have all the uh, events that supports the input HTML element. And then we need to put here as it was documented some handler. So let's put this on click sorry, on input, and then we need to create this method, right? So let's create on input, and on all the handlers in TypeScript or JavaScript, obviously, receive an event, because we are using TypeScript, we need to define the type, and this is an actually an event, all right? And then take because we need the value of this input to set to the name, let's take the target. And the target here is the, the input itself, but uh, we need to cast to the proper, so as HTML input element, okay? So this is the, the way in TypeScript for casting. So basically we have an input element and probably when we start typing something, the IDE says that, yeah, you, you have value type, focus checked. So we need the value. And then let's this dot name equals to the value, right? So we have something cool like 
we can write here. Oh, it's not working. Yeah, 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 I see. So this Spanish, in, in, in Spanish, you don't use the N before the P. Yeah, that's, oops, what's that? Thank you. <laughs> Actually, probably I had here, a, yeah, I, I had here a compilation error. And does it work? Yeah, it works. Okay, the next step is instead of using this ugly uh, input, let's use cool stuff from Badin collection. So let's put here a text field. And the next thing to learn about tags is that uh, in the tags you you have expressions. So you have expressions for. Uh, for attributes as well. So let's see what attributes has the Badin. Well, actually we have not imported Badin text field. So let's make the, the browser, uh, sorry, the ID import that. So this is Badin text field. So normally you need to remove this if you want to style, because it, it is taking the text field from the source file and not from the from the file in the in the top level of the component, which have uh, the styling. Is something that is they are fixing right now, so it supposed that in the next version uh, should work. And uh, well, so we can put something like label. We can put something like I don't know. For instance, okay, yeah, that's placeholder, and uh, type something, and so. And uh, this is the name or whatever. So now we have this cool component here instead of this one, right? So that's the way for replacing one thing for with another. So uh, but in text field obviously have the same API that input has. So let's copy and paste this here. And then when we type something here, or we type something here, it is updating. So something that we didn't do with here is that when when we modify this, we are not modifying the content. So it means that we need to put the value also equals to dollar this dot name as well as in the in the vadding component. Okay, so yeah, this is the I initial value, and when you write, everything is synchronized. Let's remove the input and then go with Java. Okay, so let's go in uh, to the Java part. And if we read the documentation about Gila, in order to access the backend, you need to create something that we call endpoints. Uh, you can export in an endpoint any m public method returning any uh, entity, list, uh, there are many of uh, many of uh, objects supported to do to export. And also you need to configure uh, security. We are not talking about security today, but uh, we are going to make our methods public right now. But uh, you can configure uh, class level, method level, you can configure roles, you can configure everything because uh, behind, uh, but in, uh, oh, sorry, a Spring Boot, you have a Spring Security. Uh, so let's create this class in the, in the Java. So something new class, and the class could be sample person and point. And the documentation says, please annotate it with an endpoint, put some security, anonymous allowed, and then uh, start doing things. So the, thi the first thing that we need is the, to have the, the instance of the repository. So let's put some person uh, repository, repo, 
we are in a spring, so we can auto wire this. And now let's have a method for listing, public method, public method for listing all the emails that we have in the database, right? So repo dot find all should return something. And this something that it returns is a uh, jobs return. Okay, so it returns a list of sample person. So you know that the typing in TypeScript is, is more strict than Java. So in TypeScript, you have to define if this list could be undefined or not, or null or not. And also if each element of an array could be undefined or not. So normally what we do is to annotate everything with non-null from the Gila. Actually, th this annotation is specific in Gila because you can, you can annotate not only uh, the return of a method, but also, uh, you know, uh, the generic in a list. So by having this, we are not going to have problems with nulls because actually our method is not going to, to put a null in, a, in, a, in this list, never. And, uh, well, let's go to our client side and uh, use something like if we go to the life cycle this is the last thing that we need to learn in lead is the life cycle and, and more specifically this callback that is very used so the connected callback happens when the component is in the in the ui so let's copy and paste this callback and uh, when the component is in the UI, what we want to do is uh, sam sample person endpoint list, right? So you, you can see that we create this list method in Java, but it's available as well in, the, in, in TypeScript. This is the magic of, uh, and we, we need to await for it because it's asynchronous, obviously. When you have to await, you need to mark the the method this and then something that we need to to assign is these people these people equals so let's create here private and people is an array of sample person right and uh, let's assign this an empty array the first time and instead of property we are going to mark this as state because it's not a public api let's import the state and now we have people so each time that this uh, ui is uh, initialized, we have a list of people in the UI. So let's uh, show it, for instance, in a UL. And then, then let's put here this people dot map. So return a list. So we can put here actually, so for each person, we can put here a new HTML but uh, method here so you can nest html inside html and then you can put here more uh, templates content and for instance dollar p dot first name and dollar p dot email and Hopefully it works. Does it work? Uh, it doesn't work, so something is... Okay, this syntax. Yeah, we have, we have here all the 100 emails. But that's not cool, because this is an UL and some lines. So let's do this by using 
cool stuff from Badin. And Badin have Badin grid, which is a rich component that we can import as the other. Let remove the, this part and uh, configure the grid. Okay, so how do we configure? Oops. Okay, so probably it has some property which is for items or yeah items so the items is equals to this dot people okay so badding grid knows now the content but also we need to say to badding grid oops badding grid the number of columns that you want to show here. For instance, one column, let's see. So we have now a grid without any content because grid is still, it knows the array of items, but it doesn't know anything here. So let's see what we have path here. Okay, path equals, so if we read the documentation, yeah, TypeScript is quite well documented. If uh, people does so path to an item sub property so basically because we know that people has first name probably we have here all good okay so the next step for our crude view or crud view is um, whoops, is to put here something like a form okay let's see yeah we need a form here but we need a form that when we click in the in the in the grid is updated or actually when we don't have any entity is is not shown so let's first see what events the grid has so if we type add we have something like active item chain all right item chain equals dollar and then put something like on item so when the item chain do something on item so this receives an event and probably we have grid active item chain event so everything is and also this is a generic for sample person okay so now we have this event that has the detail of as usual in an event and then we have the value here so the value is actually uh, it a, a sample person so we can put something like this dot item is this value let's define our item item here private Item and the item is um, sample person because it could be undefined. Let's mark this with this. So right now we have an item each time that we click in, in the grid. Let's go to the uh, expressions and we have something like booleans attributes or properties let's copy and paste in the div and uh, this dot item so it means that this division is going to be hidden when the item doesn't exist so when we click the form appears and when we click this appears okay and then well let's go further so what do we need here for we need padding text fields, for instance. Obviously, you can use here any web component that for other collections. And padding uh, text field and also a button, padding button, and for saving. We have not imported the button. Let's import it. And I'd use this by the moment and now we have this nice crud 
Actually, it doesn't do anything because we are not uh, associating this item with the content of the form. For that, Hila provides this, which is binding data to forms. Okay, and basically, uh, what it says is that you need a binder for your uh, view for uh, for this purpose. So basically, here let's define our binder. Let's make it import the binder. And the first argument is the component itself, and the second is the the model. So we have sample uh, person model. So you can see that we have sample person and sample person model. So each entity in Java has two classes in, in TypeScript, but this is because we need to differentiate the definition of, of the entities with the real data of the entities. Well, we have the binder here, and the only thing that we need to do is to bind to the form. So if we go to the this, it says that you need a directive in your tag uh, targeting the the part of the model that should be updated with this uh, text field or with this input or whatever you have there. So basically, in the text field, we need. Oh, sorry, I have not copied. So let's import the field directive, and then our model doesn't have a full name. It's first name. So you can see that everything is type safe. So Bob should be first happy with this framework, I guess. And uh, OK, so let's add more for all the last name. email and uh, phone I think phone yes and now when we reload here we don't have this why so basically because when the item is selected we need to if the item is not null this dot binder dot um, read, yeah, read the this item. Otherwise, this binder dot clear. Okay, so let's see what happened. Yeah, it works. So each time that I select one, it propagates the item to the to the form. But what? we want to do is to save this so what happened in the button when we click this on save well let's create an on save on save method okay what to do in on save well first we don't have any action here in the in the java site for saving so let public save and we save a sample person and we return the same oops the same person here so let's uh, set method return to sample person and person equals to repo dot save I think in, yeah okay so we are saving the person let's put the non null so in the next version this non null is not going to be necessary so you you can uh, you can annotate the entire class if everything uh, is guaranteed that it's not null okay so less code to well so when now when we change this with Manolo well what is the 
Where is the safe button? Something is wrong. There is a... What? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I had here some compilation problems eh, for possible. Okay. So let's. Uh, okay, I can save. Oh, Manolo, you can save. But I save and I don't see the the changes. Why? So if I reload, actually. Let's change this. It's doing nothing, right? So let's say to the bi to let's do something in on save. So this dot binder submit, and we can specify here the uh, sample endpoint dot uh, save. Okay, we have the safe method here. And we need to await for it because it's asynchronous, so let's put everything asynchronous. And now when we save Alejandro Manolo uh, save, okay, when I reload, yeah, Manolo is saving. So we need to re read the people list from the server side, for instance. Well, actually, because it returns the item, we could do something here. So uh, there is not a second trip for the for the server side. But still, it should work now. Manolo Jose, save. Uh, it works. And yeah, but what's the problem here? The problem here is when we have mu multiple users using this interface. If this user says that this is Manolo, okay, here is Manolo, but here is Eula. So if he or she reloads, okay, actually Manolo is in the database. So something cool in Gila is that apart from reactive properties in the client side is that we have reactive endpoints. So we can push information from the server side we can create very easily something like a chat or whatever. So this is an example in the documentation, how to create a chat. So I am going to copy and paste some of this code here. And uh, so first let's import this. We are, in this case, we are sample person and yeah, we have a sync here. It's not a chat, so let's put sync. And then let's do something with the sync when some someone is saving an item. So sync dot uh, try to emit the next flux and uh, with the person. So now this sync each time that one user is uh, is using the save method is updated but we need to publish a subscription for that flux so public subscription or whatever and return the sync dot as flux Okay, let's, I'm going to also guarantee that we are not returning nulls here or here. And uh, yeah, it should work. So how do we make it work? So basically when the, in the, this, when the uh, UI is initialized, what we can do is 
um, sample person endpoint dot subscription and then on next do something because it's asynchronous this is the person who, who was saved we can do something but for simplicity we are going to get all the items from the from the database instead of doing it on save we can put this here and hopefully it works I guess I don't know <laughs> okay so let we have two of two browsers what happened here connection lost why let's see I'm not sure Manolo save yeah Manolo is here and Manolo is here wow good Pedro save Pedro is here and Pedro is here okay so everything works out of the box uh, just with few lines of code right and the last thing that I wanted to show is something very uh, simple and is that uh, all the components in in the Vadin collection are customizable so basically for instance if you have a button you have they have themes and you can define here this theme you remember the button here is a button a gray button like primary in the documentation of each uh, of each web, uh, web component from the Vadin collection you have how to chain so now is blue so primary means in the in the UI interfaces that is the prime the main button that people clicks when you have for instance a dialogue or whatever but also we have a couple of themes that you can use in the body so for instance you can put here theme equals to dark and uh, body provides dark and light uh, themes so when you reload you have this cool theme right but also you have something in the web which is a Gila no a Lumo editor so let's let's select the dark theme and change something like this with some green looks this one yeah and then the primary color for the button for instance something very yellow and then the typograph something like monospace and I don't know so let's download what I have to put in my CSS block so let's go to the theme folder edit this and paste what the application says and then when we reload yes yeah you have you have changed your UI it's, I don't know if it's more beautiful than before but still and uh, uh, yes I think I have finished so in summary we we, we have a uh, Gila is just a front end in, in Spring Boot the lead element for uh, for doing the interface and then the magic of Gila which is a lot of stuff you can you can learn more in the Gila dev and if you have some questions please is the time for, for those thank you